Hello ladies and gentlemen, Holotide here, and there has been a new patch this week, today, right now, for Halo Infinite. These are the following changes, I just wanted to keep you guys up to date, and if you do want to stay up to date with Halo stuff, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're trying to hit 15k now, today, right, right here. Anyways, following changes were made in the March 28th patch. Improved stability when navigating customization menus on PC. Underperforming will no longer appear under some match statistics. Statistics. On the post-game carnage report menu, that's when it was like, if you got zero kills, it would say underperformed. You're like, what am I supposed to do? When purchasing the premium battle pass bundle, the confirmed purchase prompt now correctly reflects that players will receive 100 XP grants. That's kind of cool, I guess. Multiplayer players are now less likely to experience rubber banding or jittering. Thank God. When interacting with various environmental objects on multiplayer maps, thank you, please be good and work very good. Improved stability while respawning in multiplayer matches on Xbox Series X and S consoles. I don't play on consoles, so let me know if that was a problem for you all down in the comment. Players on all platforms are now less likely to experience crashes while loading between the main menu and gameplay. I know people have been crashing a lot. I actually haven't crashed a single time uh, since Season 3, so I think that's really weird for me. I'm normally very unlucky, I feel like. On PC, Halo Infinite is now less likely to crash on launch when using non-English keyboard settings. Uh, okay. Online matches are now less likely to disconnect all players while playing Escalation Slayer and Covert One Flag. Players are now less likely to experience crashes while playing on Xbox One, Xbox One S, and Xbox One X consoles. Heck yeah. Resolved a crash that occurred when too many navigation and objective indicators were on screen at once. Now, there's a lot of changes with Forge. Honestly, this was a pretty big patch. They say that today's update resolves a high-impact issue that incorrectly limited the number of script brains that can be placed on a map. I don't know what that means. So they say that the hotfix will change the node graph entity limit from 800 to 2048. That seems cool. Players will be able to add nodes and connections to any map that was functioning during the winter update. Maps should be able to comfortably hold scripts up to 512 nodes before running into duplication limit. So cool. Other issues resolved include players can now consistently load older versions of their Forge maps. There's some other things. I'm just going to keep them up on here because I don't want to just read to you guys. They also had some playlist changes. They added new maps to Quick Play and Fiesta playlists that were made in Forge by the community. So that's super cool. New stuff. For Quick Play, they added Capture the Flag on Starboard, King of the Hill on Salvation, Oddball on Starboard, and One Flag CTF on Salvation. And they got rid of Escalation Slayer on Aquarius, Oddball on Empyrean Slayer on Aquarius, and King of the Hill on Catalyst. For Fiesta, they added it on the maps Absolution, Perilous, Salvation, and Starboard. Then there's some tactical Slayer stuff, which, I, I don't know, whatever. So there you go. The size for Xbox is 2.9 gigs or less. For Steam, it's 1.6 or less. And if you're playing on the Microsoft Store, 2.9 or less. So hopefully that resolves a lot of these stability issues that we were having in Halo Infinite going forward. Let me know if you guys see a difference after playing, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace!